Well, good morning. Today, I'm exploring two hidden gems here in the Peak District in the Goit Valley. A place called Airwood Hall and St. Joseph's Shrine. These sites are apparently steeped in history, surrounded by breathtaking scenery and in gorgeous woods. Let's go and have a look. There's a lot of colours I don't know where to go See a lot of colours Only feeling blue There's a lot of colours Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze First up is Erwood Hall. Built in the early 19th century, this used to be a stunning Gothic revival mansion and once the centerpiece of a grand estate. Cannot take this anymore. There are a lot of voices drowning in the sea. Too many voices talking back at me There are a lot of choices waiting to be made Too many choices I've never been to the Goit Valley before Making me And my first impressions <laughs> Oh wow When you eventually find the car park to Erwood Hall right by the reservoir. This place, the mansion, is about a 10 minute walk from the car park. It's quite impressive even though it's a ruin. It used to be a rather impressive mansion um, from the family Grimshaw, I think they were called. This place only lasted about less than 100 years. I think it was built in the 1840s, something like that, and by 1930 it had already been sold off and then for a couple of years it was a youth hostel until about 1934 when it was demolished it was demolished to make way for the reservoirs that are just down the hill i'm not entirely sure why they had to demolish airwood hall because as you can see it's not underwater it's not like one of the other reservoirs where they've actually flooded the village and the buildings are under the water. So the only thing I can kind of find out really is the people who were building the reservoir were worried that the sewage from here would somehow make its way into the reservoir. So they shut it. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't just this that got destroyed. There were uh, 13 farms and some cottages also on the estates in the area that were demolished for exactly the same reason. But I'm quite lucky because when I was reviewing this place, um, some wonderful people had been in vandalising the place, so it had been fenced off for a while. And that, as you can see, all the fences are removed. And you can actually experience just how utterly amazing this place is. So if you're a vandal, pack it in and leave it alone. It's a piece of history and it's worth more than you want. Rant over. So, as you walk through the ruins of this place, you can actually really pick up on the history and how the family would have lived here and what an absolutely gorgeous place it would have been to, to live with the woods and the views over the Goit Valley. The family is still here. We're gonna go and see where they currently are. Let's go. So 
so I haven't been on for a while. Lots of different reasons I won't bore you with them. Um, and I've really done an awful lot in the Peak District, which is why I'm here today. And prior to the research, I'd never even heard of the Goit Valley. But it's absolutely stunning. Now, it's not a big walk today, just to ease myself into it because I haven't done a lot. This is a relatively easy walk, it's hilly in bits and it is muddy so bring your boots. But five, ten minutes from the car park, you find a place like that. Once we've stopped off to see the Grimshaws, the next place we're going to looks to be a right little find. So stick around for that. Shaw's last resting place. No death's easy, but if you're going to be buried anywhere, wouldn't you want it to be here? Beautiful. As resting places go, they're picked a doozy. Start of this about eight o'clock. It seems to me, and granted, I'm basing this on limited knowledge of the Peak District, but I've seen videos. The Goy Valley, certainly the, the route that I'm walking today, it's really quiet. As I say, it is early, but still, it's the Peak District. The sun is out. It's a bit chilly, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I think I've walked it past three people. And just as I say that, I turn the corner and walk past seven, I guess. <laughs> Confessions of a hiker, part one. <laughs> You're gonna rely on your phone app, Mike. Make sure you download the right route. I'd initially plotted this as, as a much smaller route. And for some reason, I didn't sink the other one. So I suddenly got sight of the reservoir. I thought, can't be finished. Come to the earlier route, I was finished. But luckily, I remembered the route. So now, I'm walking up the route. I originally intended to walk down. Because the thing I'm gonna go and see, I think is worth the extra effort 
So I'm going to climb up the hill, down into the, into the dips, see what I've come to see, because I think it's worth it. <laughs> and then for my sins, for not doing the right thing in the first place, back up the hill, back down this way and along the reservoir. So I'll see you in a bit. Just seen the roof. I'd show you, but you're probably not going to make it out on the camera. So bear with me two minutes and I'll be right there. Wow, absolutely well. This shrine was built as a tribute to the local community's faith and resilience. It's beautifully designed and you can feel a sense of calm from the moment you walk inside it. Do you think you'll agree that the detour was worth it? St. James's Shrine <laughs> is something I've never seen. It should be in The Hobbit or something. It's just built the side of a hill in the middle of the woods and it looks like it's still being used. It is without doubt one of the quaintest, most loveliest things I've seen and not something you'd expect to find walking through the woods. So I think I'm just gonna take a little minute here Spend some time here, have a bit of a rest, and then back up over that hill, and back to the car. But up to now, Goit Valley, what a find. Shrine done. On the plus side, the climb back up the hill that I came down is far less severe than the other side that I came up, but that's my bad. So now, back the route that I came here, which was originally the route I was coming away from, at least I now know where I'm going. Now heading back towards the reservoirs, back towards the car. Overall, it's about three and a half mile don't include the detail but in my defense that's what I walked along anyway so I've done the distance I've just come the wrong route he says so yeah about three and a half miles I wouldn't say it was too hilly um, walking boots I would say are essential because it is the peak district and unlike today it does rain a lot and it is slippy and boggy in places so wear decent boots but this walk, as I say, first one I've done for a while. And I've absolutely enjoyed it. Goit Valley has been an absolute surprise to me. And I don't know why, because I've heard so many things about the Peak District, but you've got views for miles. You've got woodlands, hills, dales, sunshine today. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking for an easy walk, in the Peak District that's not gonna do you in and you're not gonna need overnight camping stuff for. I'll drop a link to the proper route in the description so you can find my uh, 
my maps and my routes in Outdoor Active. Not sponsored. Um, so yeah, if you fancy a, a quick three and a half mile walk, taken in Airwood Mansion, taken in St. Joseph's Shrine, give it a go. You won't be disappointed. See you in a bit. Cautious side, you should know 